Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about winter fragrances. Yes, winter is here. We already have some really cold days, especially during the night and in the morning we have freezing temperature here. So I decided to do my favorite winter fragrances. So these are warm, deep fragrances that can stand the cold. So almost all of them are very long lasting and very projecting. And most of them are fragrances that I can tolerate to even wear in any other season. So if you want to know my recommendation for the best winter fragrances, then please keep on watching. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Noura and on this channel I mostly talk about fragrances. So if you are a fragrance lover, then please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload any new video. And I have quite exciting series coming very soon now that we are approaching the end of the year where I do a recap of the whole year. So the best releases, best discoveries, most used fragrances, most used products, all that good stuff. So don't forget also to hit the notification bell. Also follow me on Instagram where I post some exclusive content that I don't do here on YouTube. And without further ado, let's start. I am not going to do this list in any particular order. I will just grab the first fragrance that I have here and talk about it. So the first one I have is the Bewitching Yasmin from Penhaligans. Yes, yes, the hype is real. It's a very good fragrance, a very friendly wood fragrance, so perfect for beginners. What really makes this fragrance quite unique is the combination. So it's not rose and wood, it's jasmine and wood. And it works beautifully here. There is vanilla, there is the spicy touch. There is it's just a stunning fragrance that even wood haters complimented me on. So that says a lot. Very long lasting, very projecting. As all wood fragrances or that have quite a dose of wood, it's a little bit, you know, sharp in the beginning. So just avoid like the initial spray in the dry down. You will get the jazz and you will get the vanilla, the spiciness, the wood. The whole combination is really bewitching. I find the name quite fitting. It's quite captivating and very alluring. Addictive fragrance with great performance. Very long lasting, very projecting, so perfect for winter. Love it and highly, highly recommend it. The Bewitching Yasmin from Penhaligat. Speaking about oud, we have another oud fragrance and that is Rose Omayat. Now here is like your typical rose oud combination. Mmm, this is so good. If you love a sweet oud, not jammy. A lot of people say it's a jammy rose. I don't get it. It's not so sweet to call it a jammy rose. It's a sweet rose, but not too much with oud. Again, a very beginner friendly oud. It's in the background. The rose here is the main center and it's an ode to the Damascus Rose. Ayat is a caliphate that had its capital in Damascus. So it's an oriental Damask Rose. It's a little bit fruity, there is raspberry, it's slightly sweet. Such a stunning combination. One of my favorite oud rose combination, hands down. You definitely have to love rose and this kind of rose, so this Middle Eastern rose. But even if you don't, just try it. You may like it. I was not like the biggest fan of oriental roses, to be honest. And I fell in love with this one. Not at first spray, again. I tested this one maybe three, four times before falling in love with it. It's so, so beautiful and very, very elegant. I think this is a fragrance that you can wear also during autumn, you know, and evening out. But I personally tend to use wood fragrances during winter. It's just a little bit too much for me with the weather is a little bit, you know, even slightly warm. I like my oods during winter and that's it. Another fragrance from Atelier des Ors is my beloved Rouge Sarai. Oh my God, I love this fragrance so much. My only wish is it wasn't so expensive. I have a full review on this one. You will find it in the description and in the eye up here if you want really a detailed review on it. And this is a gourmand oriental fragrance. It has dates, so it has a little bit of a sticky feeling to it. So your very sticky dried fruits, along with this lovely smoky guayacuts. The guayacuts 
wood here is so good. So good. It's the guayac wood here <laughs> that makes it for me. So to me, it's like you have a plate of these high quality dried fruit and you are sitting by the fireplace so you have a little bit of the smoky touch you have this woody touch and you are eating this sweet sticky dried fruit beautiful beautiful fragrance my favorite from atelier de Zor, hands down i i just have no words of how addictive this fragrance is once you spray it try to <laughs> Stop yourself from reapplying during the day, even if you smell it. It's so addictive. It's one of the most addictive fragrances in my collection. Love it and I can't wait to wear it. Also, it's perfect if you want to feel warm and cozy. It's one of these fragrances that will definitely put you in the mood. Next is Inicio Blessed Baraka. Ah. Oh. oh my god. Now, this is a fragrance that I strictly, strictly wear only during very cold days because it's quite potent like all these fragrances are it's very heavy it's dark it's deep it's alluring captivating fragrance there is amber musk and sandalwood it has also a spicy touch it definitely has some hidden going on here and the end result is a very warm spicy Ambery fragrance. It's very addictive, but not like Rouge Sarai where I want to reapply the fragrance. It's something that I just want to keep sniffing, you know. So if I spray it, I keep on sniffing my arm every one now and then, even if I smell the fragrance because it's quite projecting and very long last. I think from the whole, yes, this is the most beast one in the fragrances that I'm going to talk about. Has the same vibe like Carlyle from Parfum de Marly has this sillage that is so intoxicating and it's extremely sexy very very sexy especially on a man this fragrance great definitely a unisex fragrance the only thing that i have to mention it's not everybody's cup of tea so don't blind buy this fragrance please this one you have to try and you have to test before buying it and try to spray it on your partner or someone and just smell the sillage that have this amazing sillage that is even better than smelling it up close so if you want an amazing sillage definitely get yourself blessed baraka next we have winter palace from memo this is a stable for me for winter not because of the name but because of like the vibes that this fragrance gives so i tend to use this one I want to feel again cozy or warm during winter it's one of these fragrances you will be surprised it's quite fresh actually it has tea it has this gourmandy citrusy vibe to it it smells to me like you are drinking tea and you have like a lemon cake beside some oranges it's a gourmand tea fragrance very unique never smelled anything like it and one of the best from memo in my opinion again i have a full review on it check it in the description down below and also in the eye if you want more details it's just an amazing scent but it's not a very long lasting fragrance or very projecting so as you can expect from a tea fragrance it's a little bit light so i use this one mainly indoor i don't use it much outdoor to be honest so indoor i like to spray it again and i want to feel cozy when it's very cold and i want to watch a movie or something and i want to feel a little bit cozy i go for winter pass i also have a buying guide on memo so if you are curious about memo or you love the brand then i will leave the buying guide down below Next is again a fragrance I can't wait to wear. It's Vanilla Diorama from Christian Dior. It's sweet, it's vanilla, it's on the gourmand side. So it, it replicates or it is an homage to a dessert that the Christian Dior used to eat at Maxime. And they tried to recreate the, like the dessert that is mysterious and also the scent. And I don't know about the dessert, but the fragrance is just amazing. This is my favorite from the private collection from Dior. It has this boozy touch. It's all about the vanilla here, but it's toned down with a little bit of this 
orangey feeling it has a boozy touch it's delicious and sweet but not too much again a fragrance that i go to when i want to feel cozy i have actually a video on cozy scents check the description but i also use it going out uh, it's not the best in performance but my tip is to spray this on clothes when you spray it on clothes you can smell yourself the whole day no problem so vanilla diorama from christian dior next we have my favorite armani privé ambre centrico this is an ambery spicy fragrance you definitely have to love spicy fragrances and i know there are a lot of ambery spicy fragrances but there's something very very special about this one i can tell you what it just is it has a slightly clean powderiness just a hint it's one of these fragrances that are very difficult to describe and again not everybody's cup of tea it's slightly sweet and it's unisex and it's very underrated no one talks about it i don't know why to me this is the best from armani privé hands down and i've tested almost all of armani privés so this is really really good mm, very long lasting very projecting be careful <laughs> when spraying this one like the same i would i would say with blessed baraka these two fragrances be very careful not to over spray Especially if you are indoor, you may choke yourself and choke the people around you. I sprayed this one, I didn't even over spray, I think it was four or five sprays and I, and I was going on a trip to Egypt and I was on the plane and I was dying. <laughs> choked myself very very beautiful ambery fragrance is very very underrated amber eccentrico from armani privé another armani privé that i added recently to my collection is magenta tanzanite now i know that a lot of people would wear this one almost all year round honestly i would wear this also during autumn but it's a little bit too gourmand and too spicy for me to wear it all year round honestly and this is a vanilla cardamom combination so it will remind you of other fragrances like for example Christian Louboutin, uh, Louis Rouge, um, Lune Feline from Atelier des Ors, uh, Changing Constance from Penhaligans all have this vanilla cardamom base going on. I am thinking about doing a video on this combination because I found like I have a lot of fragrances actually with these two notes combined what makes this one special is the added coffee and tobacco the best that i would describe this one is imagine luby rouge if you know it and add coffee and tobacco to it so it's not like this very strong vanilla this is very animalic rubbery smell that you get from loom feline it's more of a soft vanilla it has this coffee note it has the tobacco the cardamom and the whole effect is quite gourmandish I wouldn't categorize it as e gourmand fragrance but it has this vibe to it it has a little bit of this dessert effect to it has very good performance i was shocked that actually the first time i tested this one i was totally anosmic to it i couldn't smell it don't know what was going on that day but anyway it has really really good performance so definitely a fragrance that can stand the cold weather magenta tanzanite from armani privé and a beautiful amber fragrance is bouquet ideal from zerjov or i should say bouquet ideale and um, it's very middle eastern style fragrance it's but it's not like this very opulent you know in your face middle eastern fragrance it has the same style but definitely westernized and it's again this warm ambery fragrance it's a little bit sweet a little bit woody it's very balanced and it's one of the fragrances that you may smell the first time and you say mm, ma nothing special about it but testing this fragrance more than once i fell in love with it although i do have a dupe for it that i actually own that i gifted my husband long long time ago and i didn't know that it's a dupe for bouquet ideale and that is kalimet from um, arabian oud i think if you can't afford zerjov definitely check kalimet from Oud. it's really simple and Kalimet has better performance 
uh, but it's not as well-rounded anymore, smooth like Bouquet Ideal. I actually filmed a comparison video between Bouquet Ideale and uh, Calumet and Golden Powder from the House of Oud that I somehow lost. So I will definitely have to refilm that video. Next, let's talk about cherries. And I have two. I will talk about both of them because they are quite similar. This is Lost Cherry from Tom Ford and this is Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. Both of them are amazing. They are delicious. They are sexy. Compliment magnets. Oh my god. This one has this Palo Santo note, has this woody base that makes it so, so, so special. If you love gourmand fragrances, you love cherry, these two are amazing. However, both of them have very bad performance. Love them both, would definitely recommend both of them. And I personally would repurchase, if I finish these, I will definitely repurchase both of them. Although very similar, they have some differences that, I don't know, makes me gravitate sometimes toward Lost Cherry and other times toward Love Fest. So if you love gourmand, sweet cherry with this mysterious dark side of the woody note, definitely check Kayali Love Fest and Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Let's talk about a winter jasmine fragrance and that is jasmine sunback and marigold if you love jasmine like i do and you find like these typical fresh jasmine fragrances not suitable for winter this is definitely it a winter jasmine fragrance very very strong jasmine and this is why it's suitable for more of a colder weather this one during summer may be a little bit too much. At least it is definitely for me very natural smelling jasmine. Like a very strong natural smelling jasmine. There is marigold. I'm not like the biggest fan of marigold to be honest, but here it just works. Stunning jasmine fragrance. Quite simplistic in a way, but beautiful. For jasmine's lover, Jo Malone, Jasmine Sandback and Marigold. Now let's get to Dior and we have Poison Girl, the EDP. This is almond vanilla play-doh. <laughs> it has a very, very predominant play-doh smell to it that I personally don't mind. It's not like really off-putting. I like it. So if you are okay with that smell and you love almond and vanilla, this is a solid option. I can wear this one also during autumn. And so it works not only with very, very cold weather, very, very hyped up for a reason. It's a very nice smell. I can't consider it like a sexy fragrance. For me, it's not so sexy. I don't know. I don't have this experience. So please tell me in the comments down below what do you think? Is Poison Girl a sexy fragrance? Moving on to what I personally would consider definitely sexy. Givenchy L'Interdit Rouge. Mm, this is so good. So good. But it's for me a winter fragrance or a cold weather fragrance, definitely. Very projecting, you know, Landerdi are very opulent, strong, good performing fragrances. This is not an exception. I would also recommend the black one. So the intense that has this sesame note in it that is very, very unique. I prefer the rouge, but I have the intense one on my wish list, So I would recommend both of them. Rouge is for me more sexy, although everybody says that also the intense is sexy. I'm not sure about that, so again, tell me in the comments if you consider the intense a sexy fragrance. What makes this one special to me, it has this kick, the spiciness. It opens a little bit fresh because there is blood orange, if I remember correctly. So. Overall, I like the composition of the rouge more than all the other flankers, actually. I have also a buying guide on Lanter D line. You will find it in the description down below if you want to watch it, as well as a full review of Lanter D rouge. So definitely check that video. Last fragrance, we have L'Herbolario Mejares. This is the most affordable option I can think about when it comes to 
strong winter fragrances. This is said to be a dupe for Mascara Vajor from Frederick Mull. I actually have a sample of that fragrance coming very, very soon. I can't wait to test that fragrance, you know, hearing about how great it smells. Anyway, it's supposed to be a dupe of that. I can't confirm that, but the smell of this one is 10 out of 10. And considering how much this fragrance costs, it's really a steal. This is a 50 ml and I think I paid around 25 euros if I remember correctly. Anyway, it's in the 20s, so very, very affordable, has very good performance and it's extremely unique. So it's warm, cozy, ambery, slightly spicy, but very difficult to describe. It's in the same like vibe like Ambre Chain Trico, a fragrance that I struggle a little bit to explain why is it so special. So if you can test this fragrance, definitely do, especially with that price tag. I mean, you can't go wrong. So with that, I finished my favorite or what I would consider the best winter fragrances. There are definitely more fragrances that I would love to include, but I wanted to make a small list and include only fragrances that I have a bottle of. And it's just a way for me to make the list a little bit short and not go on and on for maybe an hour about all the winter fragrances. So if you liked this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell, especially that now coming December, I will upload a video every day for the first week where I go through like 2022 uh, as a whole, so I, would talk, I so I will talk about the best discoveries, best releases, and also the worst releases, most used fragrances, most used products, and all that good stuff. So if you don't want to miss this series, then definitely make sure to hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload these videos. Please tell me in the comments down below what is your go-to winter fragrance or your favorite one. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao!